So the new site Guru 3D is reporting about Big Navi and what they believe could be the rumored RX 5800 XT. However, I think they got this wrong. Navi 21 with 80 compute unit is not Radeon 5800 XT, but the big one, the RX 5900 XT. Anyway, they are reporting that Big Navi is getting a total of 80 compute unit, and that is twice the number of compute units that we find inside the RX 5700 XT, which is based on Navi 10. Now if this leak is real, that would make Navi 21 and the RX 5900 XT twice the size of the Radeon RX 5700 XT. Now AMD has already confirmed uh, big navis on the way, but the question is, could AMD be planning on giving Nvidia's upcoming 3080 Ti a challenge here, or is this graphics chip just going to be yet another 1440p upper uh, mid-range card? Oh, uh, probably not. Anyway, we're gonna take a look at what we know about Navi 21 and what the possible RX 5900 XT can do about Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3000. Can can this graphics card actually be a serious threat to Nvidia? I'm not gonna hold back, I'm gonna give it to you right now. The answer is yes, this is a huge ship and it's definitely going to make Nvidia sweat a bit. I believe that this ship may as well be AMD's graphics card comeback we all been waiting for for such a long time. Anyway, let's take a look at what we know about Navi21 and the RX 5900 XT. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome to RB and Hardware. My name is Robin, hope you're doing fantastic. Now this leak came up on a Chinese forum known as Ship Hell and Guru 3D has also reporting about this. But yeah, everything is written in Chinese. I'm using Google Translate here. Otherwise, I wouldn't understand the word. But according to the leaker, an engineering sample fueled by this Navi 21 ship has been sent to North America for testing. And if you don't know, many rumors are suggesting that this Navi 21 ship is AMD's upcoming big Navi that we all been waiting for. And apparently it's got 80 compute units or 80 CUs. If you don't know, AMD's current highest than Navi offering spells Navi 10, which got 40 compute units. The size of the ship is about 251 square millimeters. And this is a picture showing how the ship looks in greater detail. And again, Navi 10 is used in the RX 5700 XT. Now what's cool here is that because we have a good understanding how powerful the RX 5700 XT is, we can actually do a rough speculation how powerful this Navi 21 uh, GPU could be and using simple math I know this isn't 100% accurate but expecting twice the performance from a RX 5700 XT isn't actually totally unreasonable and considering the fact that we're also getting RDNA 2 which supposedly also should be better optimized for gaming than what the first RDNA uh, architecture was we should expect massive amount of power here and speaking of RDNA let's jump back once more to the forum post Post. And apparently, according to this post, Navi21 is RDNA2. RDNA2's got support for ray tracing. The way RDNA is structured and designed, first generation RDNA is limited to 40 uh, compute units, which is a limitation in the architecture, apparently. And what's so damn exciting about RDNA2 is that it's going to be AMD's first, you know, pure RDNA architecture that isn't built on the older GCN design or the graphics core next, because that is not the case with current RDNA, as AMD decided to leave a few traces and elements in the older architecture. And the reason why AMD shows this approach are several. For one, GCN is very well optimized for games and game engines, and ditching the GCN architecture for the first generation RDNA would have been a big loss for AMD, and it would have been forced of starting from scratch, optimizing games and game engines with RDNA, and so by making the first generation RDNA half GCN, GCN and half RDNA simply gave them more time and preparation for the future. But AMD has admitted that while the GCN design allowed them to compete with graphics card solutions in both uh, in gaming and in the data center segmentation, they were forced on making it effective for gaming and even compute performance, which made it not as optimized for gaming as they wanted. Now, gaming requires 
specific things that this architecture wasn't really meant for. So GCN had its limitations and so in one way I guess you can say that the GCN was the jack of all trades and the master of none and this is something that uh, AMD was able to fix with RDNA which is actually a big deal if you think about it because what they have done here is that they have created a new platform made specifically for gaming. One of the big news with RDNA is the new compute unit that is optimized for gaming and a new multi-level cache hierarchy for lower internal latencies, power consumption and higher bandwidth and the architecture itself is also optimized for higher frequencies. And so going back to this leak here with Big Navi we're getting a new architecture which is purely optimized for gaming. Now RDNA 2 also brings support for more compute unit at least 80 in total if these rumors turn out to be true. We're also getting support for hardware accelerator ray tracing as well as something called variable ray shading and so Navi 21 is more or less guaranteed to be based on RDNA 2. Now this is where things get interesting. 80 compute units will take up a huge part of the GPU die and we got rumors saying Navi 21 could be as big as 505 square millimeters which is huge for being a graphics chip and this could explain why it's so big because it needs to hold 80 freaking compute units that's why anyway this obviously begs the question how powerful could it be and could it possibly challenge nvidia's rtx 2080 ti well if it performs like two rx 5700 xt glued together we can expect it to beat the rtx 2080 ti pretty easily now, this screenshot from the open vr benchmark shows the power of an unknown radeon gpu beating the rtx 2080 ti now it is unknown what gpu this is the bigger question is could could it beat Nvidia's upcoming RTX 2080 Ti? Well that is very hard to say, I think it's a bit too early to speculate as we don't really know how Nvidia's brand new Ampere and 7 nanometer architecture will perform, I guess it's not entirely unreasonable. But in the end we still don't know anything about pricing and judging from the size of the die it could turn out to be a very expensive graphics card but remember now that AMD's got their target on the high end segmentation they will be facing big Big threats from Nvidia and if they want to stay competitive yes they gotta have to adjust the pricing to meet the competition as well. We all remember the RX 5600 launch right where AMD decided to upgrade the performance via a BIOS update in last second to counter Nvidia's RTX 2060 price drop. I think 2020 will be a pretty interesting year for gaming. I say let the war begin. In case you're interested in what Nvidia is getting work for us, I highly recommend having a look at my Nvidia 3000 series video I made a few days ago. You can find that video down below. Now guys, I love to know what is your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is AMD's comeback we've been waiting for? Or what do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Now there's obviously gonna be more to this story and I will keep posting updates around this as more leaks and news comes out. In the meantime watch either of these two videos and I will see you over there. Thank you so much for watching this video as always. If you've got any questions please let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video.